Okay. We're going to continue with our regular meeting. Uh, we already did the Pledge of Allegiance for the public meeting, so we're going to start off with the roll call. Don? Yep. Jack? Yes. Yes. Uh, take a look at last month's minutes, see if there's any additions or corrections. Accept the treasury report. Second. In favor? Aye. All right, this time uh, we'll turn it over to Mr. Rickley. Got a little information on the incinerator. Yep. Um, as you know, we, at your request, the board's request, uh, we have been working on a ordinance and uh, with regard to um, regulating waste incinerators in the township and uh, I'd like to say that we've come to the conclusion of that process and I'd like to submit for the board's consideration the uh, ordinance um, per the second class township code we'll have to have you authorize the advertisement of the ordinance and uh, to ensure that the public at large beyond the local residents, taxpayers have a chance to comment on it, um, schedule a public hearing that will take, I would suggest, take place on June 12th. January. January. Did I say June? Yeah, January. January. <laughs> I'm thinking warm weather. <laughs> January uh, 12th at 6 o'clock, right? Yes. Is a recommended time. It just seems to fit within a bunch of things that are going on. So we would hold that meeting hearing excuse me hearing there'll be not there'll be a stenographer here taking down all the testimony and um, after that as long as there's no desire to amend the ordinance in any substantial way if you do then we'll have to adjourn the meeting re-advertise for a 10-day period and then reconvene for the consideration of the amended ordinance but as long as nothing is modified we then would go into a township meeting, special township meeting, and consider and vote upon the ordinance as well. <coughs> so I have the ordinance. I'd like to ask the board for a motion to have uh, Julian Graham advertise the ordinance for consideration. I make, I make a motion to advertise it. Second. Okay. All right. So although the, um, the um, second class township code says that it only has to be advertised once, I think it's best to advertise it twice because I think there's a lot of public interest in this ordinance and so that's what I did with the legal notice and then the public hearing notice, legal notice has also been uh, scheduled to be advertised twice. Copies available here. Yes. There'll be copies available at the um, publisher, which is in the independent, right? One of the two independent. Yes. So you'll have to provide that. And um, I guess you'll post it on some type of media, social media. The Township Facebook okay. page will also have it. I mean, it's not required. Games. Yeah, it's not required, but it's, it's a courtesy. And, uh, you know, I would encourage. The members of the public to they want to submit comments written comments before that day that we accept those written comments and we just would then uh, read them into the record or place them into the record at the time of the uh, of the hearing on the 9th mm -hmm. so i can open up the public comment or statements um, at this point if you'd like 
Is that okay? Yep. Is there anybody on the other? I mean, I'm not going to go, obviously, I'm not going to go through the ordinance at this point. I don't want to offer any kind of information. It's going to be self, uh, as self explanatory as it possibly can be to anybody that may not have a very technical background on some of the uh, aspects of the ordinance, but um, I'd be happy to. You know, take a limited number of questions, I guess, as to the ordinance, and I'm supposed to look at this stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Jeremy Chapin. Chapin. Chapin, I'm sorry. Yeah, so, here. Mr. Chapin, would you like to make any comments or statements? Uh, I'm just, I'm just concerned about how ironclad this is going to be, because of the first time we've been through this, where it didn't hit the uh, litmus test. How solid is it to? hold up in court against having the incinerator here? Um, well, that's a two-part question, I guess. The first part is, you know, we feel that the multiple individuals that have worked on this ordinance uh, is a legal document that, if challenged, will hold up in court. And that was the entire intent of, the, of revisiting that ordinance. As I said multiple times over, this ordinance doesn't preclude the creation or the construction of an incinerator. Mm -hmm. It sets limits and regulations and establishes a way of monitoring um, what the incinerator plant would be putting out. And that's, if they meet those regulations, they can build, they can build a plant. Does it also cover other businesses in this type of field? It is a, a specifically to waste incinerators. Okay, so we would have to go through. The, Sorry. We would have to go through this whole process all over again for a different type of business that we might want to come in that we didn't like it, or well would it harm us. This because of the nature of the incinerator, <clears throat> it is dealt with completely different than other um, industries. So this is specifically to waste incinerator. So to answer your question, probably to some degree you have to have a separate ordinance. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Can I have a question? Sure. Uh, not directly to that ordinance. I I wrote a letter and I couldn't make the meeting. I don't want to get some feedback of how that. Uh, was accepted or rejected and the idea basically I said why don't we have a backup plan you did see the letter I wrote yes. I remember yeah. it yeah. and then it was why does why does our town have to accept garbage from out of district from other counties from other states could we not simply say you can't bring trash in here to dispose of it in New Milford Township. Wouldn't that be a plain and simple way? It would, would, maybe even more surefire, but if nothing else, a backup plan. Um, we discussed that with the environmental attorneys and the answer was probably not. It wasn't simple. It was potentially preemptive. And it was another area of regulation that the township may not have the ability to engage in. So the answer is. And why don't they have the ability to do that? Uh, because you know, somebody wants to come on my property and dump garbage. I can tell them no. Can I not? And can the township say no, no to it? Uh, the township, like I said, it's a preempted area of the law, is my understanding, and that means that the federal government has taken control of the regulation of that industry, and as a result of that, the township, it would be limited, and I don't want to say how limited and what degree, because I'm not in anywhere well versed in that area, but I've posed the question, and it was uh, addressed in that fashion. Mm -hmm. well, uh, one more point. I'm, I'm okay. I understand we're a commonwealth, and that means that the power comes from the people up. I think that's the entire United States. Is that, is that basically correct? 
well, the, my understanding of the civics is that it is like that throughout the United States, that the people, we the people, are the, you know, the government works for us, if you will. But then the government says, no, you can't. You gotta accept that. Right? Well, there's, there seems to, that I don't know if I can get a conflict to me. Yeah. Well, I, and I can. And everyone's uh, entitled to that uh, their opinion. I just can tell you what the law uh, states as best I can, and that um, within that broad context of what you just said, there's a lot of yeah. gray area. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're saying it could be unconstitutional? What can be the law? Because, no, because well, if, if, this, if some court says it's unconstitutional, sure. But that's what the court systems are there for, right. to determine that. So the legislature puts it in, the executive signs it and enforces it, and the judicial branch, anal the judicial branch analyzes, uh, analyzes it and determines whether or not it's constitutional. Mm -hmm. oh. I'm not sure that you have an answer, but it might be a question opposed to um, the people who drafted the ordinance. Mm -hmm. How dependent is it on current EPA standards and given the current political climate and projected changes within the EPA, will that have to be fine-tuned? Granted that we'll hopefully will turn very slowly within the EPA, but again I'm asking how dependent is that on EPA standards and guidelines? Um. As you will agree, there's no doubt that the EPA's uh, regulations are um, utilized in this ordinance. So to the degree that they would be impacted, I guess that we would have to analyze whether or not the ordinance needs to be modified based upon the supervisor's <coughs> decision to make it more or less stringent. Um, I also note that the um, environmental group has uh, gone to great lengths to determine that certain limits and certain criteria are not only based on, on the EPA. We've gone, for example, to California and pulled some regulatory work out of California, which seems to be have one of the more stricter levels. And so okay. uh, you'll notice that when you read the ordinance that we've gone beyond just the federal government's <coughs> uh, regulations. <coughs> And it's, in fact, just before I get that going, it's um, a significant uh, level in terms of the risk assessment that needs to be taken. So just, and I won't go through it significantly, but there's emission limits, and then there's monitoring of the ambient air, and there's regulations as to how much ambient air can be uh, uh, affected by this. There's a table in the back that sets forth the limitations, okay? But then there's also a um, risk assessment analysis that has to be undertaken. And the standard is, and I'll just read this, it's much more than this, but for example, cumulative total cancer risks associated with all air toxic emissions from the waste incinerator shall be less than one in one million for the most exposed individual for an entire 70 year lifetime. So my understanding is that it's a significant um, standard to meet. Uh, the Commonwealth has a much lower standard, so we've increased the, that. Thank you. Yep. Will the ordinance be available tonight? Um, yes, yes. Yeah, we make a yeah. yeah. We just need to go through the formal process. Would the, would the uh, ordinance be grandfathered in if the EPA decided to change their uh, regulations, or do we have to but well, we may need to amend the ordinance, and I don't know the answer to that be, because it, I think it, it, it depends on what you're talking about in particular. But if the um, if we feel as we when I say we, I mean the board. If the board feels that there needs to be modifications to the uh, ordinance because of differences in regulations, then that's the way we would do it, is analyze it. So the idea is that this is a continuing process. Now, if the ordinance goes into place that the township will have probably, we will need to engage environmental group, and what I mean that by like uh, Liberty uh, consultants, to continue on with the process of, of analyzing data that comes in to the township through this ordinance. So any, any changes from the EPA have to be analyzed through the- Sure, that's right. They would be okay. consulted. We All would right. probably ask them to keep, you know, 
to obviously keep their eye open for modifications and then to right. counsel us as to whether or not anything needs to be modified. Because there are specific tables involved in here. And so let's say the EPA says, well, this table no longer exists. I would want to default table to the Thank you. Anybody else? Um, Mr. Sheehan, you mentioned the non the Milford Township resident, I would uh, just like to say I really, really appreciate all the work you guys have done, and uh, I commend you for for taking on this uh, challenge and and doing something. So, just like to offer that as my comment. Thank you. Yeah. I think we'll. Uh, I think we'll allow that comment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take a bow, guys. <laughs> okay, so I guess that's all I need to do from this perspective. I need to do what? I'm sorry, I need to do to advertise. That's what I need. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 they did. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. sorry. Jack made a motion. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're uh, we're good. We're I, this is my copy, but you're going to have. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I'll get them in just a few moments. But Are you advertising the independent or which one? The independent. Yes. That's my work. I think no. it actually goes into three. Because in the independent, the weekend and something else when we send it to the weekly group, we put it in all three. Oh, okay. What about the transcript? Yeah, the transcript, the weekend and the so that's, that's two different papers, so that's okay, I don't care if like, that's <clears throat> typically we'll have to do one paper of general circulation in the area. One time. Let's throw right. out that the transcript always covers you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there you go. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Yes, but I think you also have the next item on the Yeah, do we want to go to the next uh, thing? Nope. Yeah. 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 Um, Jules, I forgot the day that we met. Do we have any recollection? Was it the? It was the 8th. The 8th of December. Yes. I'm sorry. Interesting. Okay. So, um, Pentagon <coughs> Yes is a company that is has purchased a piece of property on 492 approximately a half a mile to a mile from 81 and they requested a meeting with the township and at the town at that meeting uh, was jack conroy who represented the bureau of the township and the board Teresa white as the sewage enforcement officer bill shivo as the codes and the building codes enforcement officer and Julian Graham and myself. And then also there was from the Pentagon gas side, uh, their consultant was uh, former mayor Christopher Doherty who, from Scranton. Um, and I will not remember the, both of the gentlemen's names, but there was a gentleman here who was the project manager and a gentleman from Florida who was a principal of the company. And they wanted to express to us what their intent was and to understand from a very technical standpoint what things needed to be done at the township level for approval of this process. So they had a, we had a conversation about generally what they're looking to do. The property they have um, purchased is a parcel of property that um, has a gas Ease, line, a pipeline easement through it with a company, I can't remember, DTE or whatever it was, DTE. And they, the theory is that they'll tap into that pipeline, extract, you know, take the gas from the pipeline, and then uh, put it into these mobile containers. And I got a picture, I think, you know, I might just look at it if they want to come up here afterwards. They would fill these uh, mobile containers up, put them on trucks, and distribute them out to, I think it's Northeastern. Like the New England states, England. right? That's, and, and theoretically, there might be some use of the gas to um, supply local communities too. I mean, that's, I think, from my impression, that was pretty far into the future. That was nothing. The more um, immediate thing is to put these uh, containers on trucks and move them out of the area. And so um, that's what their intent is. And they, have already uh, spoken to DEP, Penda, and they have invested, say, said some significant time and money into those processes. And so I guess it was basically an informative type of uh, 
meeting where they were telling us what their plans were and we were just advising them as to the permits and the things that they would need to get done from township level for them to get the ball rolling here. And a lot of the other stuff has to do with things that are, again, out of our control, such as uh, PennDOT, um, DEP, and Planning Commission. It's about an hour's meeting. Hour? Mm -hmm. yeah. What do they do for explosions? Does it go in through the pipeline and, and out a uh, pumping station? In so case it like yeah. yeah. How far does that go? Yes. I, they, they said to me, as I rock up, please, anybody that, you know, if I'm saying it wrong, um, my understanding was that the system shut down the entire process, that there would be an explosion because if there was a leak or some kind of malfunction, then you know, theoretically there was this emergency, emergency system. system. Mm -hmm. um, the system. That's what they represented to us. Um, they said that there will be a couple improvements, when I mean improvements, buildings on the property, uh, which the, there's a, a big building apparently where the trucks go in and fill up and then head out. There's a place where it was like an office building with like an employee lounge. There was a third building that was, excuse me one second. You may want to mention that they plan to engineer the buildings to look like yeah, um, a working right. Farm. Right. They they it's said that initially it was a different design, and then they decided it wasn't fitting within the you know the aesthetics of uh, New Milford Township and the area around there. So they were going to make it look more like a, a barn, I guess. So they said a 60 by 75 steel building for our truck repairs, 150 by 275 foot building for fueling operations and a 30 foot, he said diameter building is the way I read. Silo. Oh, it's a silo, oh, okay, right. For an office? Yep. Okay, I guess I didn't get that. What's their estimated truck volume? Yes, that was a major, I, four an hour, four an hour, yeah. And, and is it 24 hours a day? Yeah, from what I understood. Yeah. All, it, there are peak times of the year and not peak times. I think this time is a peak time. November to April is peak. So this this air air ordinance air quality ordinance is not going to go for trucks either. No, that's not with that that's not with that kind of volume. Or no, that's just not that type of ordinance. Right. And um, again, that starts getting into inter interstate com uh, interstate commerce. Right. Which we can't. And touch. that's another issue that again I'm not saying you can't regulate it to some degree. I just believe it is heavily regulated. I think it's time to move out to the country. Is it seven days a week? Yeah. And how big are the trucks? Yeah. Sure. I didn't even hear about that. The trucks are not Huh? The trucks are natural gas trucks. Are they track oh, yeah. are they tractor trailers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would believe yeah, you know, I think they look something like this. And are they compressing the gas at high pressures? They are compressing the gas, yes. I don't know what in high is compared to low. Did they, did they give you the pressure? Um, they did not. They at least I didn't write that down. They did <coughs> indicate that the um, containers were designed to withstand three times the pressure. So they, I mean, of course, they uh, indicated that these containers were very um, safe. Well, they're, they're not going to tell you it's going to be risky, <laughs> right? <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, they obviously did talk, they talked about, you know, the direct employment. Um, there is a 24-7 uh, site with three ships. The first on any one. They said there's no um, compressed natural gas station within, what, 80 miles from here, I guess. Are they going to... What do you mean no compressed gas station? They're building one right now in Forest Lake. That's true. So that's within, what, about 30, 40 miles? Well, that's true, but it's not now, I guess. But that was what they said, so I'm just sharing that information. Are you going to give us new fire trucks to battle all this? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we did. I, I think that it would be fair to say that I did mention that that they should contact EM, um, emergency services and have a conversation with mm -hmm. Penn and with the county. 
Um, I gave them the fire company's contract. Fire company. A nice donation for the fire trucks? Mm -hmm. Well, whether they do that, that's their decision, I guess. I met with the business, the uh, development guy, and we exchanged business cards and we'll get back in touch. Okay. Basically, what this company does is they're, they're supplying natural gas to places that don't have pipelines or don't yet have pipelines. That's their business model. And so it's like, it's like a, we think of a program tank, this is a natural gas tank. It pops someplace. So they can serve an entity or a municipality someplace or, or commercial. Well, I, know, I know a lot of your big companies are switching over to natural gas operating mm -hmm. vehicles. Uh, UPS, FedEx, a lot of them are switching over. This is a big natural gas filling station. Yeah. They fill these trucks, they take these, these uh, containers of compressed natural gas to sites and then that site uses the natural gas because they don't have it otherwise. There's no pipeline. So that, that's kind of the niche. Like Connecticut is one of the spots they're going to. Call out. I'm not sure. Uh, comment. <laughs> a question. So basically, this is the answer to the fact that the pipeline isn't going through New York. They're, they're trucking the gas to those areas. Um, brake retarders. With all that truck movement, will you put signs up prohibiting truck uh, brake retarders? Well, it's something to consider. We can pass an ordinance, except on a night thing. That's a state rule. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, New Milford Borough put in a uh, noise ordinance on that issue, and the state wouldn't allow them to place it on one of the roads, and I cannot recall if it was 492 or 84. And so the one, I think, coming down by Cindy's towards the pump and pantry? Is that 492, that's 492, and they would not allow that to occur. I wonder why I'll have to ask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's been a survey done on that. that was Can you include East Lake Road on that? On the what, the retarder? Yeah. That's well, 24 hours a day. It's unbelievable. And the, the hoops I got to run through to, to get something like that is just asinine. What do you mean? Uh, asinine. No, no, I know. I, I don't <laughs> the one before, what you, the hoops you got to go through, I'm not sure what you mean. Well, I got to I gotta petition these guys here oh. for a letter to be sent to Scranton or Harrisburg. And then Harrisburg has to contact these guys to get it approved. And then you got to do some kind of a study. It's about a year and a half down the road. Meanwhile, 24 hours a day, these guys are running down the road with their brake retards on. Mm. Wakes me up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, um, I have a no brake retarder sign on, on the road that we live on. Yes, you do. And uh, I called the companies. I know. We talked. Oh, we have. Yes, oh, that's we right. We have. I, I call the companies and I, I let them know to remind their drivers that no brake retarders are allowed. I There's can't nothing see. to enforce it, I can't but see they it. listen to me and, yeah. and it goes away. Yeah. You call them, I call them. Yeah. It's being in touch with the companies, actually. Yeah. It gets you a lot farther than the state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't see the side of the truck because of the trees. Oh, that's right. I'd have to camp out by my, at the end of my driveway to see through the mud on the side of the doors at this point. Yeah. <laughs> or you have to follow them up the road to put find a game, out. Put a game camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. But they're pretty good about balance. Yeah, they, yeah. They, I think if you find out who they were, they don't want to help. Thank you. And what about the lights? What kind of lights are they going to have? Is it 24 hours a day? It's going to be all lit up, that whole well, area? There will be lights. There's no doubt about that. I mean, I think the ordinance, the subdivision ordinance, and land and development ordinance, Requires some lighting. And how close is the closest house to that? I don't know the answer to that question. They, they did say that they were working with that too, as well as making the buildings look yeah. like they've been into place. They said they're well aware that there's houses around and that they are going to do the best that they can so that way the lights are not shining in the windows of the house <clears> and stuff. I think that's a requirement under the ordinance. I'm just saying that's what the ordinance says. Mm -hmm. I have two quick questions. <laughs> Where is this on 492? About a mile heading towards East Lake. We were to take 492 to East Lake or, you know, past Montfort. The old trail used to be. The old trail used to be. The old trail used to be. The old Okay. Oh, okay. So pretty close. Oh, yeah. Sure. And then the other quick question was, you wouldn't happen to remember the guy from Florida's name. It wasn't Paul Cobiello. No. 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 Okay. No. Not the one who's sitting here. Yeah. No, I just wondered. Okay. Anything else? Okay. That's all I have on that.
Can we have a copy of the ordinance so I can take off? Sure. Uh, There's your still printing. Um, 2017 budget is available for review. Uh, considered for adoption at the January 3rd reorganizational meeting. They're attached to your agendas. Um, we received a letter from PSAT's executive director, Dave Sanko. Uh, responding to the Pen Pennsylvania Auditor General's statements with regards to the impact fees, monies. I'm not going to read it. It's a lot of it. It basically shows support for the township. It says that we're, so far we're doing everything correct. <coughs> In shell, I guess, right? Yes. It says, because they've been on top of it. <coughs> We have a lot of Southwest activity. Um, we've got a notice of intent for consumptive use on the Bianco pad, on the Eastman pad, and then they're also applying for a major modification coverage under ESCDP2 for the following pads. Warner, the Roman, the Kramer, Conklin, Tony East, TNT One, and the other Conklin pads. That's what all of that is. Gibson Township would like to purchase our own machine. And, uh, we'd buy basically the same machine, just a lower grade. What's the distribution of this? I'm sorry? What's the distribution of this? Just we just hand them out now with an advertisement? Uh, people can pick them up from myself. They can call and I'll mail one out. However, the more interested people we get, the more likely we would do it. If we don't get enough interested parties. This is, a, this is the one. People pick this up when they come in, the one fall away. We really like to get a lot of responses to this because the more people that can sign up for this, it makes it effective for us to subscribe to this as a municipality. And this would give us the ability to reach out and tell you certain things that are pertinent to specifically the Miller Township. The county has a system, but the county can only tell you things that are going on in the county. They can't get municipal, you know, specific with it. So we probably should get somebody around town, like, you know, places, even though it's specifically Miller Township. I would think we get some, like, in the bank or whatever. Maybe we can even get a school for distribution. Sure. That might be the best way to go. What's the price tag on participating? It varies. Very Okay. It varies how, you know, it depends on how many households, how many phones per household. They couldn't give me concrete quotes until I could give them concrete numbers. Who's interested? It's not, it's not tons of money. It's a couple things. So a lot of places, like school pennies. has those reverse call systems. Every, almost everybody has that kind of system. So it's very important for us to be able to disseminate information out to you guys and say, we got a problem with X. Yeah. Uh, like text messages would be three cents. Um, a phone call would be seven cents and emails are always free. So it would just depend on how many and you could have more than one phone number for each household. So it just depends on how many participants. Yeah, that would have been nice last night coming home on 848 with that tractor trailer sideways just past the one pad. Oh, yeah, every day. <laughs> yes. You would have laid out your We had eight months of We had a turn on the back channel. A couple other things, but Long way. The uh, right after the last meeting, the National Weather Service came down and put on a presentation from the National Weather Service out of Binghamton, which covers pretty much Bloomingdale to Oneonta to Hazleton to Delaware, Delaware. Um, the 
which is what all of our radio stations and TV stations we watch subscribe to. So whatever you hear in a Wolfsbury station or a Binghamton station, they're getting it from the National Weather Service of Binghamton. And they like to get together with a lot of us about once a year and talk about winter weather. Some of the summertime they get together and talk about tornadoes. One of the problems they had because of the way radar works and the curvature here is not, it's pretty pronounced. Um, they don't always know what's going on right here. <laughs> so they look for us to give them input about what's happening here. So like snowfall, size of the ice pellet, size of hail, size of this stuff. So we're kind of their eyes and ears down here to keep them up to date. Which is a lot of times why you hit the weather forecast and scream and say, we're getting flurries and we're all out shoveling. Because they don't know what's happening right here, the weather, the, the radar's coming out of bank. That report every morning. They, yeah, we, they have weather spotters around and weather right. spotted classes, which are important. But they also look for some, you know, folks around the room and things like that to kind of give them some heads up on what's specifically happening here. Uh, a number of us went to uh, the Blue Ridge School here a week and a half ago. Members of the room here, and the uh, the FBI put on an active shooter program at the school. They put one on about a week before it in, in uh, Mountain View. It was a very informative. The uh, special agents Grant came up and put on a presentation. And, uh, there's a lot of good information in some of it. So that was certainly enlightening. And then uh, last week we participated in the statewide winter weather exercise. School systems, fire departments, emergency managers, people like that get together over at the county emergency operations center. We talk about communications in the event of. What do you do if you've got to close the road? You know, how, how does, does the information get to school buses? What do you have to do if you shelter in place? You know, this kind of information. We just talk amongst ourselves and become familiar with each other and what each other's responsibilities are. So a lot of that stuff happens behind the scenes. You never see it, but it's, it's happening. It's important stuff. Okay, this time we'll pay the bills and adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Uh, just a reminder, we will be January 3rd. with our reorganizational meeting at 7. Seven with our regular meeting to follow. So if you're coming the third Wednesday, the doors will be locked. So. Right. So no meeting the third Wednesday? No. January. Yeah, the third. It'll be like every other township on there. Everybody has to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Nope, I'm done. There's copies of the ordinance here on the table for those of you who want them. Make sure everybody gets a copy first before you grab handfuls to hand out.